Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel, welcoming you to this special edition of Movies That Pop, the top ten movies to watch if you're going through a breakup. Now, we've all done it. We break up with someone, and our first inclination is to stay at home, disconnect the phone, and just watch some movies in our sweatpants. Usually this goes hand in hand with junk food and pints of haagen dazs and varying degrees of unhealthy behavior. But the movies, the movies we watch, are what really bring us through the crisis. Sure, you can stack up a playlist with your basic chick flicks or romantic comedies or escapist entertainment, but hey, if you did that, you probably wouldn't even need this list. Good luck to you. No, I'm the Colonel, and I believe in the power of cinema. And I can tell you that movies have the power to heal, to enlighten, to help us grow, but only if you dare to look. Don't escape. Don't watch a bunch of fluff about single beautiful people who fall in love and then end up together at the end. That's not what you need right now. Some people want to give you what you want. The Colonel gives you what you need, baby. So watch these films, all of them handpicked by myself as a great, well-made movie in its own right, and all about people going through breakups. Learn from their example. Be inspired. Heal thyself, baby! And now I present the top 10 films to watch if you're going through a breakup, with commentary along the way about the tactics employed by the movie's characters, some healthy, some less so. But all of them provide food for thought for how to deal when you find yourself suddenly single. One way you may wish to deal with being dumped is uh, try to get them back. That's the tactic employed by Elle Woods, the heroine of the number 10 film on this list, Legally Blonde. In this charming comedy, which spawned both a sequel and a hit Broadway musical adaptation, sorority girl Woods, played by Reese Witherspoon, is dumped by her Harvard-bound boyfriend because she's not the serious type that he wants to settle down with. So, in the sort of wacky decision-making process that only makes sense in movies, she attempts to win him back by getting into Harvard herself. Elle? Uh, I'm sorry, are you here to see me? I go here. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? Along the way, she discovers hidden resources of intelligence and legal skill that help her come into her own as a successful woman who doesn't need to be defined by her relationship to a man. I'll show you how valuable Elle Woods can be. Elle Woods! You go get it, girl. Another, maybe not so healthy approach to handling a breakup? Denial! Pretend they don't exist. Forget all about them. Impossible, you say? Well, check out the number nine film on this list, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. In this refreshingly weird indie from the mind of Charlie Kaufman, a company exists that will literally erase your ex from your memory for a nominal fee. Here at Lacuna, we have a safe technique for the focused erasure of troubling memories. Is there any risk of brain damage? Technically, the procedure is brain damage. But it's on a par with a night of heavy drinking. Nothing you'll miss. <laughs> The repercussions that occur with such a process and the strange detours that the story takes are fascinating and set up a final scene that brilliantly illustrates the power of pure romantic attraction flying in the face of unassailable logic. And the movie demonstrates true necessity of learning from your mistakes, savoring your memories of your broken relationship instead of merely forgetting them. Eternal sunshine brings the pain, then erases it in order to show you, the viewer, how much you really need it. Another method for getting over somebody? Distraction. Take a trip, maybe. Get out of town. That's the tactic tried by the main character in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, number eight on the list. When Jason Segel decides to take a trip to Hawaii after being dumped by a famous actress played by Kristen Bell, it seems like a great idea until she shows up at the same resort with her new boyfriend, played by Russell Brand. If you're looking for a great laugh during this painful time, this movie brings the funny in a big way, with a star-making turn by Brand, some spectacularly awkward comedic set pieces, and for a movie in which Siegel does full frontal nudity, not once but twice, a surprisingly mature resolution. One that gives a great example of how to make up for your mistakes, how to be civil, even hang out socially with your ex and their new partner after you both moved on. Which brings me to another approach to breaking up. You could try to stay friends. This works a little too well for the title couple in my number seven pick, Celeste and Jesse Forever. 
You guys have been separated for six months. You're getting divorced and you spend every day together as if like it's no big deal. We are separated so, and we're friends. It's the perfect breakup. This raw indie drama, yes, it's a drama despite being populated by actors renowned for their comedic work, takes a good hard look at what it means to truly remain friends after a divorce. Celeste and Jesse still live together, almost in a state of denial, enjoying the familiarity of each other's company until it becomes clear that their friendship is unsustainable without more clearly defined boundaries. And it takes them a long time throughout this poignant film to determine, after a lot of trial and error and mistakes and tears, just what a proper, mature adult friendship with an ex looks like. Do you think it's weird we hang out all the time? No, you're my best friend. You're my best friend too. Celeste and Jesse Forever is touching and moving and pulls no punches. My number six pick is all about another breakup tactic, bury yourself in work. Go on, get busy, create something. And in this time when you're going to be rushing to your Facebook page to change your relationship status, why not watch this gripping film about the man who made it possible in the social network Mark Zuckerberg is dumped in the very beginning of the film in a scene of fast-moving Aaron Sorkin rat attack dialogue, and then he runs back to his Harvard dorm room to create what would become Facebook, technology that enabled the world to better connect to their fellow man, and that will allow you to both find someone new and covertly stalk your ex to see if they found anyone better yet. Thanks, Mark! At the conclusion of the film, after all the legal wrangling and billions are made, lost, and dispersed, the film's final image is of Zuckerberg looking at the Facebook profile of the woman who dumped him all those years earlier, sending her a friend request, and then refreshing the page over and over while he waits for a reply. Just another lonely guy trying to connect. The social network may just inspire you to get to work building an empire, that thing that will make you rich or famous and will make them regret letting you get away. Is there any better revenge? Which brings me to the next tactic used to get over a breakup, revenge. For me, the best illustration of breakup revenge is our number five film, the 1993 Polish classic, White. The middle film in director Krzysztof Kieślowski's legendary trilogy of films named after the colors of the French flag, blue, white, and red. In this film, humble Polish immigrant Karol Karol is divorced by his beautiful French wife played with icy cruelty by Julie Delpy for the embarrassing reason, even if it's true, it's super embarrassing, that he was unable to consummate the marriage. Ouch! Even worse, after she divorces him, she takes all his money, burns down his beloved hair salon, and implicates him in the crime. Over the course of the film, this man, who is rejected, Stranded without a passport in a foreign country, resorting to playing tunes on a hair comb in the subway for spare change, humiliated, penniless, powerless, homeless, impotent. Man, he's the lowest of the low, but he embarks upon a journey of rebirth and revenge that is full of surprises and immensely satisfying in a twisted, dark, and comedic way. I know, I know, foreign films have subtitles and they're really hard to find, but hey, at least for the moment, White can now be streamed on Hulu as part of their Criterion collection, and despite the subtitles, foreign films have the ability to transport you out of your own reality in very meaningful ways. In the end, this tale of a sad sack regaining his dignity and his pride after being as down in the dumps as you can possibly get may be just the thing to inspire you when you think that things can't possibly get any worse. In keeping with the theme of revenge, our number four film is another film to make you feel better about your breakup, and that would be the classic black comedy, The War of the Roses from 1990. Your breakup may be bitter. It may involve a lot of acrimony and even violence, but hey, at least you survived it, which is more than I can say for The Roses, played by Kathleen Turner and Michael Douglas. As narrated by a divorce lawyer played by Danny DeVito, who also directed, it's clear from the very first scene that this will not end well. As the conflict escalates to absurdly destructive levels, you will be reminded between chuckles that your breakup could definitely have been worse. And speaking of your breakup, maybe it's time to reflect. 
That's right, look back with some emotional distance and piece together just what went wrong, but in a very productive and healthy way. That's the tactic exemplified by our number three film, 500 Days of Summer. The film jumps all over the place chronologically to tell the story of a relationship from beginning to end, and it definitely will end. They tell you that right at the beginning. You should know up front, this is not a love story. I think we should stop seeing each other. Just like that? Just like that. Start from the beginning and tell us what happened. In fact, the relationship between the characters, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zooey Deschanel, doesn't even last the whole 500 days of the title. They uh, break up around day 200 something, but the journey itself is a cleverly plotted and stylish exploration of the true bliss and temporary insanity created by new love. The kind that makes you wonder when all is said and done and you're looking with maturity at the way it all went down, how you could have missed all the obvious signs that the relationship was doomed from the start. Finally, we're down to the last two choices and the last stage of dealing with the breakup, acceptance and closure. That's certainly the key to our number two film, the indie classic that put Vince Vaughn, John Favreau, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, and Heather Graham all on the map. 1996's Swingers. Although Swingers definitely made its reputation as a fun comedy about being single in Hollywood, it's truly a film about seeking closure. Favreau's character Mike is only a real train wreck because he's still not over the girl he left behind in Queens when he moved to LA to become a star. And in the movie's big climax, when he's fully let go of that relationship, when he's finally become comfortable in his own skin, it's only then that he gets to be with Heather Graham. It's only then that he's even ready to meet someone like Heather Graham. Let Mike be an inspiration to you. Get over that person. Find your Heather Graham. Because you're so money and you don't even know it. And finally, here we are at the end of the list. Time to get closure. And there may be no better film about romantic closure, heck, there may be no better film, period, than 1942's Casablanca. People will often list Casablanca as one of film history's greatest romances, but to tell the truth, the majority of the romance in the film occurs off screen. What's on screen is one of the best films ever made about closure, a film with iconic characters dealing with complicated problems all behind the backdrop of the Second World War with some of the greatest film dialogue ever written. Humphrey Bogart is the successful owner of a popular bar in French Morocco, but privately he's a drunken pissy mess all over the one woman he loved who ghosted him years before. Now, of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she has walked into his. And she's walked in on the arm of her beloved husband, a revolutionary who could be instrumental in defeating the Nazis. Sure, one of the famous lines, one of many famous and endlessly quotable lines in this movie states, Hilda, I'm no good at being noble, but it doesn't take much to see that the problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Someday you'll understand that. No, no. He's looking at you, kid. The problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. But that is a lie. Because the fate of the world may indeed depend upon the resolution of the romantic problems of these three little people. The fate of the war may indeed depend on Bogart making a mature decision and doing the right thing for everyone getting closure, and it's beautiful, and inspiring, and moving in all the ways that movies can be, and it's one of the best cinematic metaphors for successfully moving on from a breakup. So there it is, the top 10 best movies to watch if you're going through a breakup. Here's a list that, I certainly hope, can give you some laughs, some tears, some enlightenment, and above all, some entertainment during this difficult time in your life. If you find yourself suddenly single and just want to stay in, seek out one, two, maybe all of these films, along with the necessary pints of haagen -Dazs. I want to thank you for making it this far, remind you that you can follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and ask you to click the icon right down there to view our channel and see more great reviews and recommendations. There's more added every week, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And here's looking at you, kid.